Um, I like stool pH, and I'm glad that most tests, are like you know, more of the comprehensive digestive analyses, are still doing it, but not all are, um, sadly. And and I think we miss a bit of information when we don't get that. And I still like getting the you know, short-chain fatty acid percentages, et cetera, and the amount of butyrate. Like I think those are still key markers too. But I think with pH helps put it in, in context, because we know we can tell a few things from from pH. One of the things is potentially transit time. You know, that, that in general, a, a lower pH is, is suggested of a quicker transit time and a more alkaline pH, a slower transit time. You know, so we can get a bit of data around that. Obviously, the determinants of pH is, is, is really around short chain fatty acid production and absorption. You know, so, so those things come into play there too, in that um, obviously with, with a quicker transit time, you can have a, a more short chain fatty acids being produced but not absorbed so much. So hence, when the fecal matter comes out, the pH is quite low. Um, and you could also conversely have people that are producing a fair bit, but because their transit time is so slow, they're absorbing most of it and their, their um, pH comes out more, more alkaline, you know, and then obviously from a, from a interpretation or a production perspective, we're looking at, at, you know, fermentable substrates primarily are the core drivers of, of short chain fatty acid production. So that would be include a range of different fibers, mostly soluble fibers, um, prebiotics, resistant starches, uh, other indigestible oligosaccharides, and in, in, you know, sort of mist sugars, um, mist protein can also contribute a little bit as well, but far less than, than the other compounds that we mentioned. You know, so those things, I've always got the back, back of my mind <laughs> when looking at that. Um, and having someone's diet in the context of the pH is helpful too, because you're looking at, okay, you know, it doesn't make sense. Are they, the, in terms of the fiber load, the fermented of substrate load, in terms of what the pH is telling me. Um, I would always look at, at the pH in relevance to their, their bowel transit time as well. And, and I always do this with patients in a very low tech way, um, an expensive way of having meat corn on the cob or black quinoa or red quinoa or sesame seeds essentially not chewed, you know, so they swallow that, they take note of when they take it, ingest it, and then we look for it in their poo, you know, um, when it first starts coming out and when it finishes coming out. And, and I think that is a very simple test we can do that provides so much information because I've had patients who are doing, you know, type four Bristol, you know, beautiful, perfect poo uh, once a day, never miss a day. And it took them 10 days for that corn to come out. Wow. The other end. And if I hadn't have done that, I would have assumed it's solely on the basis of one stool a day, type four stool, that they, they didn't have a slow transit time, you know? And then conversely, you've got patients who only poo in every three times a week. You're gonna expect it to be slow, but I've had patients where it was 26 days before that corn made its way out the other wow. end. And you're like, whoa, I knew it was slow, but I didn't know it was that slow, wow. you know? So, so you're looking at pH, I think in the context of, of that, transit time too because yeah the, the opposite of that is like six hours or four hours you know um and if it's that quick and the ph is four or four and a half you're like yeah that that fits and obviously a transit time issue things are moving through too too quickly so i think that's one thing we have to look at in in, um, in relation to ph as well as, as the, their, their diet history or diet diary as well um in terms of like optimal ranges you know for me i probably Error more that I prefer it a bit more acidic than I do alkaline. So for me, five to six and a half is where I'm, I'd be happiest. And anything from six and a half upwards, I see is too alkaline. And um, we know that essentially those, those more alkaline or neutral environments are more conducive to the growth of a range of pathogens, you know, bacterial pathogens, fungal pathogens, protozoal pathogens, et cetera. So really we wanted to shift the, the pH to keep it in a range where it's less conducive to the growth of, of pathogens and pathobionts. You know, for me, that's lower than 6.5 and sometimes even lower than six, you know, um, but it, it, it's looking in, within context of symptoms, signs of malabsorption, signs of, of you know, um, a failure to thrive or something like that, that just not keeping on weight as well, because you can have, you know, pH of, of five on a stool test in someone that's immensely healthy, eating tons of fiber daily, lots of prebiotics, and I'm not worried. But if I have someone who's eating McDonald's and they're losing weight and the pH is five, <laughs> Then I am worried because something's not quite lining up. It doesn't make sense. There's some some pathology going on that explains that quick transit time. Okay. Something like celiac, for example. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, am I, am I right in saying that sort of that the maldigestion piece is a factor here as well? So if there is kind of sort of I guess partially undigested food entering the large intestine, then that that can lead to excessive production of certain 
fatty acids or metabolites that pull pH down or? Certainly that, that will, uh, celac is another, another perfect example here that they, the celac patient undiagnosed will tend to have a lower stool pH. Okay. And that's because they're malabsorbing things in the small bowel, more of everything in terms of sugars and things that otherwise be absorbed if the, in, if the villi were intact or not. So they reach the colon and they get, there's extra fermentation compared to normal, pH goes down more. So there's certainly a component of that present for sure. And I think it's something we need to have in our radar when the pH is low of going, okay, is, what's the reason for that? As I said, that, that you know, my, my personally, and I, when I assess mine on a, a conference that is still analysis, it was like 5.2 or something like that, you know, was I worried? No, because I'm, I'm eating tremendous amounts of fiber. I'm intentionally eating things to nurture my gut ecosystem. You know, um, that's, when I'm choosing any of my food sources, uh, what am I feeding? <laughs> what, what bugs in my ecosystem are going to be well fed from this particular meal? So, and then I'm taking prebiotics on top of that as well. So, you know, that okay. would be totally normal in the context of me, but yeah. it may not be normal 5.2 5 in the context of somebody else. You know, so I, I think we have to be aware of, of, you know, normal, but then aware of what impacts that and whether it's a problematic outside the normal range or not. Okay.